as the fire continued to burn. Inmu surveyed the surroundings. Inmu and the black bull inhaled deeply, released the white snake to swallow clouds and emit fog, and the black bull utilized the Taudi Bull King's formidable influence. The wind extinguished the fires and also caused the wood to scatter. The voracious wind forced the villagers to shield themselves from the flying debris. The female immortal exclaimed, while some villagers accused it of being the malevolent wind, others argued it was a nefarious technique, and still others cried out in horror. The villagers voiced their agony after being struck by the debris. Ian Mu swelled with pride and sounded her whistle, while the black bull released a forceful exhale. The villagers implored the female immortal to act swiftly and cast her spell to vanquish Yin Mu, while others urged her to deploy her unbeatable spells to devise a strategy, leading the female immortal to conclude that Yin Mu before her was no ordinary foe, before questioning whether the villagers wished for her demise. She acknowledged the gravity of her fear towards a mere child and questioned how she could face the future, reassuring the villagers not to fret, and directed them to promptly prepare the altar for her spellcasting against Yin Mu. The female immortal commenced her ritual, loudly proclaiming her divine power and soliciting celestial assistance. She also announced her summons of the celestial army. The female immortal declared their empowerment by the heavens and encouraged the others not to fear and to advance, facilitating understanding among them. They guided the others to assemble the firewood. The villagers commanded the lighting of torches and their deployment to seal the fate of their targets. Torches targeted the medical center. Annoyed, Yin Mu started to wield her axe, growing increasingly irritable as moments passed. A radiant array emanated from the abode. It cleaved through the roof. The villagers stood perplexed by the bifurcation of the house in flames. They recognized the emergence of the malevolent spirit and warned of caution. The presence of Cheng Dale was noted by the villagers. Cheng Dale and companions positioned themselves against the inferno. The female immortal dispersed some dust, convinced Cheng Dale was under a malevolent influence, and ordered the villagers to eliminate him. Cheng Dale deduced the presence of hallucinogenic scented candles, among other substances. Liu Bei also detected the aroma, identifying the dust as mingled with the essence of rice sack flower fruit. Cheng Dale concluded the female immortal's follower recruitment was aided by the addictive and analgesic properties of opium powder, a challenge he felt even his official status could not overcome. He scrutinized the female immortal's details. System information about the female immortal emerged, though her name remained undisclosed. She was celebrated as a divine woman of 65, skilled in deception and folly. Cheng Dale grasped his sword's hilt. He lunged at her and commanded her demise. Cheng Dale executed the female immortal. Blood adorned his visage. The villagers fled in terror upon witnessing the female immortal's demise. Their assertions matched the act by Cheng Dale. Distressed, Cheng Dale criticized the villagers' profound ignorance. He opined that further dialogue with the villagers was futile. Cheng Dale declared the site's vacancy of purpose and announced their departure, inquiring if a farewell to his father was desired before their leave. Liu Hong emerged, querying Liu Bei about his next escapade. Speculation arose among the crowd regarding Liu Bei's actions, Cheng Dale's deed, and the female immortal's fate. Liu Hong lamented the perpetual troubles in the absence of his vigilance over Liu Bei. Liu Hong beckoned Liu Bei home, expressing unease at the thought of another escapade. Liu Bei contemplated his rebuttal. Liu Hong alluded to an evil spirit within Liu Bei, but was interrupted by Liu Bei's reminder of his long-standing rheumatic affliction, questioning the blame placed on evil spirits for his and his son's conditions. Liu Bei reminisced about his master's fate, countered by Liu Hong's defense of his actions against a cannibal demon and questioned Liu Bei's association with demons. Liu Bei renounced his filial ties, attributing his survival to his master's influence. Liu Hong persisted in his paternal calls, met by Liu Bei's indifference towards the allegations against his master. Liu Bei conceded, then revealed the true inhabitant of his body was indeed the infamous Liu Bei. Liu Hong wondered what Liu Bei was discussing. The villagers argued, telling Liu Hong that Liu Bei had become a murderer, as they had expected and that he came back for revenge. Liu Bei laughed hysterically, and revealed that they were too late to find out since he had released his master's souls. He asserted that his master's and senior's resentment would lurk in the sewage and fresh livestock, as well as in the unboiled water, uncooked water chestnuts, raw fish, and shrimps that they often ate, prompting Adelina to call him, while Cheng Dale simply listened. Liu Bei went on to declare that as long as they were infected with their resentment, they would turn into worms, and drill into their body. He warned that the endless sickness would kill them one day, which led to the villagers becoming terrified. Liu Bei laughed, and stated that he couldn't wait to see that scene. 
He also mentioned that just thinking about it makes him want to kill again, and advised them to get out of his way if they didn't want to die, leaving the villagers in panic. The villagers argued, asking one another if they were just going to let Liu Bei go, and another guy declined and proclaimed that if they wanted to die, they should go and stop them. While some others announced that Liu Bei was no longer his son and that he was a cannibal, while others sighed and acknowledged that Liu Bei had died a long time ago, and others cursed under their breath and called Liu Hong. Liu Hong simply watched the commotion. He labeled Liu Bei a murderer. He inquired him if his son would come back. Liu Hong recalled the time he had with the young Liu Bei who was eating. He also trained him with a sword. Liu Bei pondered for a response. He sighed and left the village without a word. Cheng Dalei observed Liu Bei. He observed his daughter who was happily smiling. Cheng Dalei mumbled about father and son. At dawn, the next day, a voice remarked that they didn't expect that. Cheng Dalei advised Liu Bei that he would leave behind those few words before leaving. Liu Bei guessed that there would be a legend of a ghost master and disciple circulating in several nearby villages. He also suspected that maybe they would also think about some costumes of exercising ghosts, such as not eating raw meat, boiling water before drinking, etc. Cheng Dalei questioned Liu Bei if that was just the result he wanted, which prompted Liu Bei to query him if he should otherwise explain or debate. Liu Bei pondered if they would wake up and regret mistakenly killing his master with a few words, and if they could understand the significance of dissecting the human body, telling them that the meritorious deed would last forever, so they needed to cut open the body, before telling Cheng Dalei that it was useless. Cheng Dalei suggested that he could kill all those fools in an instant to avenge his master as long as he communicated. And Liu Bei responded, claiming that the world was full of such foolish people, that what killed his master was not that group of people, but the deeply ingrained traditionalism and secularity, which leading him to believe that killing them was meaningless. Cheng Dalei queried Liu Bei why cut off his father and relationship and take all the blame, since he believed that no matter how bad it was, he would understand and that he should at least take Liu Hong to live in the Toad Village. Liu Bei explained that he had initially considered it at first, but after spending decades in Luigia village and developing inextricable relationships with the villagers, he began to question why Liu Hong should be forced to leave his hometown in order to make him understand him. He felt that this was too selfish, but he also noted that Liu Bei had left a letter informing him that he could go the Toad City in Liangju if he wanted to find him again, and other more things, leaving it up to fate. Adelina chimed in asking Liu Bei that by letting them off so lightly was his way of avenging his master. Liu Bei pondered for a response. A water dropped in Adelina's face, which made her concerned for Liu Bei, crying. Liu Bei expressed that he wanted to kill. He wished that he could cut off their hands and feet, and let those foolish people kneel before the bones of his master and repent. Liu Bei ended up wondering what was the use of it since his master would never come back to life, and they couldn't understand them. He recalled that his master still left them his last words. Cheng Dalei contemplated what was written on his last words. He noticed that the handwriting was a bit messy, so he deduced that it was clearly done hastily. The letter informed for the master's son, Hua Zheng, his daughter, Hua Lu, and his disciple Liu Bei asking them to remember that he had been practicing medicine all his life, exploring the path of medicine without consent, and he admitted he had cut open countless bodies of the deceased, causing harm to heaven and he felt guilty towards the deceased, and believed that the world would not tolerate it. He also asserted that he would bear the sins of the world alone and repay the debt with his life, and that there was no need to avenge him, because he only hoped that the medical path would continue to be passed on, to be holy, and open for learning while making great contributions to the world. That was what Hua Chuo's last words revealed. Liu Bei concluded that even his master couldn't avoid moral condemnation who let his whole life be for those foolish people. Cheng Dalei opined that such noble character was simply rare in the world. A man appeared and agreed that Hua Chuo was a great person. Cheng Dalei and the group took a look at the man. The old doctor stood up and looked at them. Liu Bei asked the doctor who he was. Moments later he inquired if he was Dr. Dong. Dr. Dong was pleased to see Liu Bei for a long time. A system information about Dong Feng appeared, who was an unknown and excellent doctor aged 52 with skills in pulse sensing, herbal medicine, and experience as a mediocre healer. Liu Bei remarked that it had been many years since he last saw him and things have changed, and Dong Feng replied that Hua Chuo would be very happy to see Liu Bei become an adult. Dong Feng revealed that he had been observing him since he got back and inquired if he was there to see the Hua family, prompting Liu Bei to question him about what he knew. Dong Feng apologized to Liu Bei for the incident and admitted that he would not dare to disobey the villagers or save Hua Chuo. 
He elaborated that as a doctor, he couldn't just stand by and had to seize the opportunity during the chaos to get Hua Chuo's children out, prompting Liu Bei to inquire about his senior brother and sister's current whereabouts. Dong Feng disclosed that he was also there that night. He recounted that the two children had just emerged from another exit in the cellar when he intercepted them. Dog Feng quieted the children and directed them to follow him. Fires began to intensify. Dong Feng recounted that he escorted the two children out of the bamboo forest path under the cover of thick smoke since the fire had already started. Hua Zhang and Hua Lu both ran for their lives. Dong Feng continued, stating that he detained the villagers and deceived them by claiming that the cannibal siblings had fled into the second layer of the cellar. He narrated that they had escaped into the cellar, which led one villager to speculate that they were going to consume more human flesh before they perished. Dong Feng asserted that those villagers were also frightened, and none dared to enter the second layer, which allowed him to conceal their presence, where one villager directed the others to enter and capture the siblings. The villagers argued, cautioning each other not to push, before conveying to everyone that those who were unaware. The place below was where cannibalism occurred, with human bones and flesh scattered everywhere, leading others to question why they themselves did not enter. The fire began to engulf the medical center. Cheng Dalei and the group listened to Dong Feng's story. Dong Feng revealed that he concealed the siblings in the deep mountains of Zuzhou. He delivered to them the letter they had sent him after the siblings had settled down. Dong Feng suggested that he could follow the address on the letter to locate them, which led to Liu Bei inquiring why. Liu Bei mentioned that he recalled Dong Feng's relationship with Hua Chuo was not very close. Dong Feng reminded him that he was a quack, and not as skilled as Hua Chuo was, and he was also timid. He observed that as a doctor, Hua Chuo often reeked of corpses and alcohol, so he could still deduce a few of his actions. Dong Feng acknowledged that he merely performed a minor act. Liu Bei noted that his so-called minor act, which he regarded lightly, was tied to the lives of thousands of individuals in the entire city, which he also believed opened up a sliver of possibility for future medical advancements. Cheng Dalei also inquired of Dong Feng if he wished to accompany them since having someone to guide the way would be more convenient. Dong Feng declined, citing his reason that no other doctors were present within a hundred miles besides himself. Cheng Dalei counseled Dong Feng to look after himself and heed his advice not to practice medicine in the village again due to the strong animosity towards doctors, and Dong Feng concurred and urged them not to delay and proceed swiftly. Dong Feng watched them as they departed. He sighed in relief, expressing that his concerns were finally allayed. Cheng Dalei reminded Liu Bei that Hua Chua wasn't alone and neither was Liu Bei. Liu Bei acknowledged that he hadn't anticipated Dong Feng's assistance to Hua Chuo, which led Cheng Dalei to assure him that more individuals would understand him, and he wasn't isolated in his journey. Liu Bei concurred. Cheng Dalei glanced back at Dong Feng. He urged them to wait, expressing his unease. Meanwhile, Dong Feng pondered whether his previous patient had improved and if the medications were effective. His eyes widened at what he witnessed. Numerous villagers with weapons ambushed him. One of the villagers accused him of conversing with Liu Bei outside the village and suspected he was possessed by evil spirits. The villagers were commanded to apprehend Dong Feng to avenge the female immortal, blaming him for the death of the villagers, while Dong Feng pleaded for them to return his medicine box to him as he still had more individuals to heal. The villagers ordered others not to heed his words and to simply eliminate him, and Dong Feng protested, asserting that he was a physician, but the villagers cautioned him against spreading falsehoods. The villagers recollected the talismans left by the female immortal, leading Dong Feng to inform them that the talismans were ineffectual, and realized that each of them had lost their sanity. One villager declared his intention to take action against Dong Feng. He was poised to inflict harm on Dong Feng, as the man was about to bash Dong Feng's head. Cheng Dalei appeared and sliced the man's bat off. He asserted that they should thank Liu Bei and Hua Chuo. He explained to them that it was their choice that made him spare them. Cheng Dalei warned them that if they acted aggressively again, he didn't mind slaughtering the village. He menaced them to get out of his sight. The villagers screamed in fear and urged to run. Dong Feng apologized to Cheng Dalei for the trouble, and Cheng Dalei remarked that it was nothing because the place could no longer accommodate doctors. Cheng Dalei proposed to Dong Feng to pack up his things and come with them. Dong Feng pondered and concurred with Cheng Dalei since he believed it was good to practice medicine anywhere. Moments later at some mound, Cheng Dalei arrived at where the group were. He rode at the back of the Black Bull and Dong Feng rode alongside Liu Bei and Adelina. On that day, Luigia village lost the last doctor within a hundred miles. Cheng Dalei arrived at Zuzhu, ten days later. He fed his daughter some porridge, and noticed that her illness was getting more severe, which he believed that if he couldn't find a suitable doctor, 
he could only let Liu Bei perform the surgery. Hart argued and stated that Liu Bei's medical skills were still immature, and even if Liu Bei was promoted to the peerless level, she believed that the success rate wouldn't be too high, and Cheng Dale acknowledged. Cheng Dale mentioned that the trip must not go in vain. Dong Feng mentioned that the sibling should be in seclusion in that mountain forest. He also noted that they no longer practice medicine, and he didn't know the detailed location of their residence, which led to Liu Bei's deduction if they have to search in the deep mountains little by little. Cheng Dale reassured them, telling them that Yin Mu would show them the way. Dong Feng wondered if Yin Mu knew the way, and Cheng Dale admitted no before explaining that she was good at finding people. Yin Mu softly whistled. The black bull also exhaled aggressively. Cheng Dale instructed them to follow Yin Mu. Yin Mu whistled in that direction. They began their track. They encountered a dead-end road. Two structures started to appear. They approached the house and saw a farm in their yard. Inside the house, there were few sculpted Buddhas. A woman was also sculpting another statue. Hua Lu carved the Buddha with a sad look. A voice outside inquired if anyone was home. Hua Lu's eyes wide open as she turned around to where the voice came from. She dropped her tools and took cover in the blankets. Cheng Dale inquired again and again if someone was inside, while Dong Feng, exhausted, voiced how he couldn't bear it any longer after a few days of bumping on horseback. Cheng Dale concluded that no one's answering which he surmised that no one was inside the house and it was empty, which led to Liu Bei pondering if he should take a look first. A man appeared and questioned them who they were and advised them to stay away from his house. Cheng Dale addressed the man as little brother as if he recognized who he was. Hua Zheng's eyes were terrifying as he stared at them angrily. Dong Feng groaned, which aggravated Hua Zheng. He rushed at Cheng Dale. Hua Zheng demanded what they did to Dong Feng. Cheng Dale clarified for Hua Zheng's information, before telling him that it was a misunderstanding since they explained that no one was inside the house. He realized that they had found the right person. A system information about Hua Zheng appeared, who was an unknown top doctor at the age of 25 his skills were human anatomy, herbology, and more, with a hidden attribute of photographic memory and an experience of once a peerless doctor. Hua Zheng urged to run because he would hold them off. Liu Bei recognized that it was his junior. Hua Zheng realized that Liu Bei was still alive, where Liu Bei was delighted to see him after a long time. Hua Zheng feared that someone had kidnapped Dong Feng, which led to Dong Feng reassuring him not to worry because he brought them to seek medical treatment. As the trees blew, the group began discussing. Hua Zheng looked at Cheng Dale's daughter. As he opened the clothes, he recognized it was the blood flesh goo and remarked that once the goo awakened, it would be extremely dangerous since it lurks in the heart vein. He inquired Cheng Dale where his daughter got the western shu goo. Cheng Dale elucidated what he expected of the descendants of Hua Chuo, stating that he could see the crux of the problem at a glance, before inquiring if he could remove the goo. He questioned Cheng Dale why he wouldn't let Liu Bei do it since he was skilled. Liu Bei expressed regret. Hua Zheng scolded him, reminding him of Hua Tu's proclamation that he was not allowed to operate on people without permission when he was out, before interrogating why he wouldn't adhere. Hua Zheng declared it ended up like that in the end, which led to Dong Feng advising him not to mention it since it was all old history. Except for Hua Tu, the Hua family regards them and Hua Tu is the best medical experts. Dong Feng queried Hua Zheng if he could assure them he could save Cheng Dale's daughter, prompting Hua Zheng to contemplate for a response. Hua Zheng apologized to Cheng Dale and admitted that he couldn't save her, prompting Cheng Dale to inquire why. Cheng Dale implored Hua Zheng to save his daughter, before vowing that in the future he would be useful to him and would repay him with his life. Hua Zheng confessed it was not that he didn't wish to save his daughter, but that there was nothing he could undertake. He recounted that Cheng Dale should have visited Luigia village and discovered what happened to his family. He recounted that on that night Hua Chuo and he barricaded the villagers together, and Hua Chuo perished and he was wounded, whence he fled into the cellar with Hua Lu, and although with Dong Feng's assistance, they managed to escape. Cheng Dale and Dong Feng were astonished at what they witnessed. Hua Zheng showed them his arm and revealed his hand was crippled. He also mentioned he couldn't perform any fine work. He attempted to close his hand, which induced its trembling, and opened it. Hua Zheng disclosed his hand muscle was severed, and although it was reattached, he could no longer wield a knife. Cheng Dale remarked that the foolish villagers actually managed to cripple a highly skilled doctor. Hua Zheng expressed regret as he wished to assist, but he was powerless. Liu Bei inquired Hua Lu if she was inside the house and pondered where she was because they had been there so long and she hadn't appeared yet. And Hua Zheng responded that Hua Lu couldn't contribute in her current state and requested them to depart. 
Dong Feng inquired Hua Zhang if he could see Hua Lu. Hua Zhang affirmed he had no objection since Dong Feng was their benefactor. Dong Feng stated he required three to four individuals to aid him since his old body was frail and fragile, which he believed wasn't too much to ask. Hua Zheng pledged he could assist Dong Feng to come over. Annoyed, Dong Feng reminded Hua Zheng that his hands were shaking, before questioning if he could take responsibility if he fell. Cheng Dalei appreciated Dong Feng claiming he didn't abduct someone for nothing. Hua Zheng cautioned Cheng Dalei that he better not follow, prompting Cheng Dalei to inquire why. Hua Zheng inquired if he was Cheng Dalei. Cheng Dalei pondered why he recognized him. Hua Zheng clarified he was only suspicious at first. But since he identified himself as Cheng, he began to connect the Black Bull and the Mute Girl. He also mentioned the most crucial aspect was that no one in the martial world could emulate the malevolent energy emanating from Cheng Dalei's body from the Mountain of Corpses and the Sea of Blood, leaving Cheng Dalei wondering if doctors possess a unique perception. Hua Zheng reminded him that the martial world was in turmoil because of Cheng Dalei, and everyone was conjecturing what he was plotting and was perplexed that he was currently at his place. Cheng Dalei solicited Hua Zheng for a chance because he hadn't had one before, and he looked at his daughter before reminding himself he was solely a father now. Hua Zheng was rendered speechless. He conveyed he spoke earnestly and highlighted how unparalleled his power was, that even if he forced entry, he couldn't halt him, and that he merely hoped that when Cheng Dalei entered, he could attempt to suppress the malevolent energy in his body as much as possible, which Cheng Dalei grasped. Hua Zheng knocked on the door, announcing it was him. He announced Dong Feng had arrived and brought some friends with him, before inquiring if she would like to meet them. Hua Lu mentioned Liu Bei and Dong Feng's names and consented to Hua Zheng about meeting them. Hua Zheng unlocked the door. A few Buddha statues were assembled, and in the corner was Hua Lu who was shielding herself with a blanket. Cheng Dalei referred to her as his last hope while searching for her information. He glanced around and noticed a few Buddha statues. A system information about Hua Lu emerged, who was a 25-year-old unparalleled physician with divine hand, anatomy, herbology, and acupuncture skills, as well as a hidden attribute of frozen heart and experience with a genius autistic child. Disappointed that Hua Lu was another unparalleled figure, Cheng Dalei deduced she was worse than Liu Bei, and speculated if she was Liu Bei 2.0 after observing her symptoms. While Liu Bei's reaction was similarly astonished, leaving Cheng Dalei to ponder if geniuses' minds were distinct from ordinary people's.